Hey what's up you guys, welcome back to my channel if you're new here, hi hello I'm Lydia and today we are going to be talking about the first time I ever got sectioned, what being sectioned means. So yeah, today's subject is being sectioned. A section is the right to detain a person in hospital and depending on which part of the act that is, it depends on how long that can be. Section 2 of the Mental Health Act is a 28 day hold, well up to 28 day hold, you can be discharged sooner, non-renewable. Then there's Section 3 of the Mental Health Act which is 3 months, then 6 months, then once a year. That one is renewable and can be used as long as needed. Then there's all nurse holding powers which are Section 4 and Section 5 of the Mental Health Act. And then there's the police powers which is section 135 and section 136 and 137. So the first time I got sectioned was in Preston and I didn't know the police had powers and I got sectioned under 136 the mental health act and then got put onto a section 2 and pretty much dragged on the ward because I tried to do a runner between getting transferred and that resulted in me getting my neck pushed down and restrained and dragged in by a lift and then literally dragged onto a ward. What hallucinating feels like because a hallucination is ultimately what got me sectioned. It's hard to explain because it feels real. Like what you are seeing is real in your eyes because it's what you can see. When you're stood there screaming at a police officer saying there's a guy over there, there's a guy over there, there's a guy over there and there is no one over there, you just feel like you're going absolutely insane. And, and you're not. Like when people say you're going insane, it's not a bad thing. Like it's not. There's just so much like, there's some, there is so much stigma surrounding mental illness. Especially hallucinating. Like hallucinating is the hardest symptom, in my opinion, to deal with as an individual who struggles with mental illness. Because it's hard to distinguish real from not real and when you live with it on a daily basis it gets even darker and harder and in this admission I was convinced that there was this guy following me even though I was on a female unit I was convinced a guy was following me around everywhere and I literally did nothing I stayed in my room I stayed in bed in a corner I just didn't do anything because I was afraid. Sectioning is only used if a person is either unable to understand the need for hospital admission, point blank refusing to be admitted and presenting as a risk to yourself or risk to others. In eating disorder cases it can be because you're on death's door, if you're psychotic it could be because you are a risk to yourself and you can be a risk to other people without meaning to be. But I want to say this, being sectioned is not a bad thing. Don't think it makes you a bad person because you've been sectioned. It's not going to ruin your life because you've been sectioned and it is only used when it's needed and if you do a dumpling section yeah it sucks I'm not gonna pretend it's fun like it's not you're literally trapped in the hospital most of the time it helps I've had experiences where it hasn't helped and it's made me a lot worse um, generally speaking putting me in hospital ends with me getting more agitated than when I'm at home where's my drink gone how have I lost a two up bottle because when you're in a section, you do not get to say, I'm not doing this because they can just make you. Obviously, they can't force you into therapy. No one can force you to participate in therapy. They can make you go in the room. They're not likely to, though. Like, they, they, they try to ask your opinion. Like, they try to involve you. But ultimately, it really doesn't matter what you say. Like, they are... they. Know they're the professionals and they will take their own advice. The first time I was admitted, it was I'm a bit of a control freak. I like being in control of my own treatment and knowing what's going on. In that first admission, I had no clue what was going on. They didn't give me a care plan, they didn't give me a treatment plan, it was just what they said went. The admission. The admission happened because I was off all my medication and I've said this hundreds of times, I cannot be off medication and coping. I was hallucinating, I was depressed, I tried to kill myself and then I got convinced someone was trying to kidnap me even though no one was there and I found the police and they put me on a 136 the mental health act. That was incredibly traumatising because they immediately search you, arms out and pull on search you, pay you down like you're a fucking criminal. It was terrifying because all they say is you're detaining you under section 136 the mental health act and then you get forcibly taken somewhere and that was terrifying. The 136 happened in December. I was placed in a section 2 which lasted 2 weeks. The process of an admission, so you get given your rights. On a section 2 you have a right to appeal for up to 28 days and they can give you medication by force if needed. I talked about this briefly in my last hospital vlog which was from when I was on a section in January and I got injected with haloperidol, lorazepam, promethazine and haloperidol and all sorts because I was so agitated. It, I lashed out. Their response was perfectly reasonable. Like, I, I can't 
fought them that I tried to escape and I got sedated that's how it happened in the UK physical force is only used if necessary they are much more likely to give you medication if you refuse medication they can force it and it's not it's not dignified it's not anything anyone wants but it happens another thing they do is they search all of your belongings absolutely everything get a pat down they have metal detectors they do it for their own protection and for your own protection from yourself it's like there's a lot of paperwork in the beginning you can speak to a doctor once you've had that done and told, like, you know, you get your medication, shown to your room or in some wards, they have dormitories. I've been in dormitories and I've always ended up getting moved to a side room because I have anxiety issues. But when you get onto the ward, though, it's so... For the first one, anyway, it's so intimidating because you don't know what you're walking into, especially with acute wards. Like you, you have no idea. I've only had a few bad experiences with patients on wards. My first admission was definitely emotional, and I definitely did not want the medication that I had to take. But I also didn't want to get forced to take it, so I just took it. Um, the thing I found the hardest, and I still find the hardest, is food and eating because they expect you to eat around like, a group of like twenty to 30 other people that you don't know. I'm really insecure about that stuff like that anyway. Um, it, it wasn't pretty, like it, it was, I didn't really do anything. I, I didn't even charge my phone in that, that admission. I literally just lay there looking at a ceiling and that was it. Had my meds, went to sleep, woke up, did nothing. Had my meds, went to sleep. In adult wards, there is not like a daily structure. Like there's not activities, there's no education to do, there's nothing kids wards you have stuff to go to school but you get to the school that's on the ward like, there's basically an art room and a tv room and some wards have outdoor areas it varies depending on where you go but what i can say is it is not as scary as you think you are not likely to be attacked no one's gonna be running around screaming whatever you're not gonna see people getting dragged out rooms by staff it's not it's not how films portray it and i've said this for years and i'll carry on saying it if wards were like films, you'd be safer in prison. Go with the program. Go with what they offer you and don't be afraid to question things. If you think you're not being treated right, speak up and say something. Don't lie there and take it because at the end of the day, it's your hell and you know you better than anyone. You know you better than you know you better than anyone. How many times can I mispronounce something in one video? If you do have any questions about inpatient, let me know in the comments down below and I'll try my best to answer them. Or if you want me to do a QA on this subject, feel free to. I'm gonna tell some other stories from Psych Ward, but I thought this would be a good introduction to the subject. So this video is a bit about my first admission. Like I said, it was scary, but the best thing you can do is mix with people and try and talk to a few people so you've got not friends but so you can like build friendships and get to know people and talk to them a lot of my friends i have met through mental health units twitter um but the best thing you can do on awards so you feel less alone is have visitors if you're allowed like honestly in my last two in my last well not the last admission the three admissions i had it would have been so much harder if becca wasn't there because i would have been so alone and then getting visitors is nice because you get the sense of like you get a sense of the outside world I mean, I know I, I have really bad anxiety, but I always try to talk to someone. I've always made friends on wards, and I still talk to most of them now. And honestly, if, some pe if they can take you when you're at your worst, they're in luck when you're the, on your best. Um, and that's where I'm going to end this video. Thank you for watching, and if you're new, subscribe. Also, if you want to go and subscribe to my monthly mental health box, the link will be in the description down below. You know, I do stickers. I have all sorts on there. So... Go check it out, it would really mean a lot. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. And yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow with a new video. Peace.